So I recently had an amazing conversation with some really good friends. They were basically asking me about what they should do with their finances um, and I wanted to try to help them as best I could. If you're interested, keep watching because these will be seven financial tips for future millionaires. And yes, that includes you. Number one is know your net worth. It's basically your assets minus your liabilities. Your assets are things that you own, like a home, a car, maybe a really expensive watch. And then your liabilities are basically all of your debt. It's everything that you owe. So if you have student loans, credit card debt, personal loans, car debt, you have to list all of these assets, add them up, all of your debts, add them up, and then subtract your debts from your assets. If you have no debt, great, your net worth is probably positive. If you do, your debt could be negative and don't panic. I have definitely been there, but at least it will help you better understand where you're currently at compared to where you want to be. The next thing you should know is know your income. I cannot believe how many people do not know their own income, but this is definitely reality for some people. Um, so if you don't know your own income, please take a look at your pay stub, take a look at what your gross pay is, what your net pay is, figure out what deductions they're actually taking out of your pay so that you can better understand what your income is because that is one of the most important tools you have in your arsenal to build wealth. If we're talking about income, we also should talk about expenses, which is my third point here. You need to know the total amount of your fixed costs, which are basically the things that you can't really budge on month to month, like rent or mortgage, utilities, health insurance, dental insurance, debt payments if you have debt, pet expenses, groceries. These are typically the costs that you need to incur to live your everyday life. Maybe you don't need some subscriptions, maybe you do. It depends on your situation. But it's really important to know that number because that number should ideally be 50 to 60% of your income and it should not surpass it. If you're living below 60, 50%, that's great, it means that you're living below your means, you can afford what you're spending on, and therefore you have extra money to send to other things that are important in your life. And under the umbrella of expenses, I am gonna talk about investment and saving. You are using your income to send money towards other accounts, like investment accounts, 401k, 403b, IRA, Roth IRA, or your savings account, which ideally is a high yield savings account. So it's important to get in that mindset that you also need to pay yourself. You are an expense, future you is an expense, you need to make sure that you're saving for retirement in a timely manner. You need to make sure that you're saving for any goals that you have. And then after that, you need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. You need to have some room for guilt-free spending, like clothes, doing your nails, buying books. These are all very important things that should be part of your budget and part of your expenses every month. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more about savings. It is so important to know what you're saving for. Why are you saving? If you're saving for a wedding, a baby, um, a big vacation, this is all very important to know because it's going to motivate you to actually save the money for that event. You also have to consider what takes priority. A lot of people tend to buy homes before they start a family, but you know, really sit down and think about it. Run the numbers. Do you really need to buy a house for a baby? Last time I checked, a baby is quite small and buying a house is a very big purchase. It's probably the biggest purchase that any given person is going to make in their lives. Once you figure out what you wanna save for, how much you wanna save, you need to figure out when you wanna save it by. So come up with a date that's reasonable, that makes sense with the amount you wanna save, and then divide that amount by the number of months between now and that date. That will give you your monthly savings rate. So if you wanna save $12,000 by the end of this year, you need to be sending $1,000 every single month if you wanna be consistent. And the best tactic to do that is to set up an automatic transfer between your checking account so that you can see your savings actually grow every month and it forces you to save because now you have an automatic system that does it for you. If you have debt, it is very important to take that list that you already made to figure out your net worth and figure out what method you wanna use in order to pay off that debt. I'm assuming you would want to be debt free at some point. That may not be the case for everyone. There are two main methods that people talk about when paying off debt. The first one is the snowball method. This is the method that I personally employ to pay off my student loans because once it clicked for me that paying off debt is much more behavioral than mathematical, I completely latched onto that idea. The snowball method basically has you list all of your debts from smallest to largest balance. Once you have that, 
you need to focus on that smallest debt. You want to send all of your income after minimum payments on the other debts to that smallest debt so that it can be paid off as fast as possible. When you finally pay that first debt off, you will feel amazing. At least I know I did when I did that. And it will hopefully motivate you to continue tackling the rest of the debt little by little, one by one, until you're completely debt free. Now, for those who are math nerds like me, but actually want to stick to the math, there's always the avalanche method, which involves listing all of your debts from highest to lowest interest rate, regardless of the balance. This will actually help you mathematically pay off your debt faster. It makes a lot of logical sense. If you're someone who can stick to a plan and not veer from it, this method is definitely for you, especially if you're interested in getting out of debt faster and basically doing it the mathematically correct way. The only drawback with this method is that it will take longer for you to see those small wins that typically motivate you a little bit along the way, but this method is definitely the proven method to get you out of debt faster. Now, I actually want to add a third method that not a lot of people talk about, and to be honest, I kind of want to coin it the rip the band-aid off method, okay? So when you did your net worth calculation, you should have had assets in there. If you happen to have assets that are greater than the amount of your debt, you need to rip the band-aid off. Send any savings that you already have beyond an emergency fund, of course, you need to have an emergency fund in place and send all of the rest of those savings to your debt. Just be done with it, like get it over with. There is no reason why anyone should be talking about planning to pay off debt when you literally have the money just sitting in an account doing nothing. You are already being charged interest on your debt. It's probably better to pay it off, especially if you have that money sitting in a savings account that is not a high yield savings account because it's really doing nothing then. So this is why it's important to take a look at what you already own versus what you already owe. Sometimes you can just solve your problems immediately without needing to wait for future paychecks. And to me, that's very obvious, but a lot of people find it very, very hard to give up a lot of their savings because a lot of times it's a safety blanket. They think that they're gonna need it exactly when they end up spending it. But again, I wanna stress the importance of having that emergency fund and then sending anything that remains towards your debt. Um, if it pays off your debt completely, that is amazing and it's definitely a no-brainer. Now, when you're debt-free, that frees up a lot of your income. So if you were investing before, great. If you want to invest more, even better. If not, this is great because now you have all of this money freed up to send towards investing. And I think that everyone should be investing. It's not some exclusive thing for rich people or very wealthy people in the top 1%. I think it's something that everyone should be doing so that they can grow their money grow their wealth and retire without too much stress. A way that I've been making investing a lot easier for myself is by automatically contributing a portion of my paycheck to my company's 401k, getting the match, and this year I started contributing more than I needed to to get to the match. I also actively contribute to a Roth IRA. Since this is not taken directly out of my paycheck, I basically have my money in my checking account I set up automatic transfers between my checking account and Fidelity, which is where I have my Roth IRA. And every month I get $582 taken out of my checking, sent to my Roth IRA. It sits there and I've also created another mechanism with Fidelity where once my money is deposited into the Roth IRA account, it takes my money and invests it into an index fund that tracks the S&P 500, which has averaged a 10% rate of return per year um, since its inception. And I think it would be very wise if other people my age did that as well. Number seven is just, you know, to live for the hope of it all, live your best financial life, and make sure that you're consciously and intentionally sending your money to where you want it to go. You need to take control of your finances, you need to know what's going on with your money, and then you can grow and build your wealth. All right, thank you guys so much for listening, and please comment below which point resonated the most with you?